All right. Well, it's the faith conference. Yay. Amen. Amen. So what do you think we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about some faith. Amen. Amen. Now, I'll forewarn you. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll forewarn you. Nothing bad. Nothing bad. I'm, one, I'm not going to give you a time, but I'm not going to say we're going to be forever either. All right. Last time I got here, I gave you a time and uh, I think I was 10 minutes over. But we're going to let the Holy Ghost do what he wants to do. Amen. It's his service. But uh, I, I'm, on a, I'm going to rip up a little bit of tradition today and then we'll put you back together and when you walk, you'll be that much better. All right. I'm just, I'm just not this religious guy. I'm more about having a relationship with God. And uh, sometimes we'll, we'll get through all the processes and procedures of what we're supposed to do. And we, we don't have a relationship. You know, I relate to people and I believe God wants to relate to us. That's how we're going. I'm going to approach the word today. All right. We're going to relate. Amen. Luke chapter 17. Yeah. Now, if you don't have a Bible, you may need to get a Bible or peek over somebody's shoulder and look at their Bible. I did not get the media ministry, the scriptures. Um, I just didn't think about it. So they won't be on the screen. Amen. But whenever you come to church, come bring your Bible. Amen. Don't rely on the screen. Bring your, you need to bring your Bible. See, my Bible, I had to, I had to take my Bible and get it rebound because it's all messed up, you know. And that's, I know I have my tab and my electronics, but it's nothing like. That's right. Yeah. Ain't nothing like that sometimes, you know. Yeah, I know. I, I still got, I got all my stuff because I take my stuff with me. But, you know, when, you know. That's cool to me. Amen. It says I'm doing something. All right. <laughs> Luke chapter 17, verse 1. It says, Then he said unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone be hanged, were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea, than that the, uh, he should offend one of these little ones. He said, Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if you trespass against thee seven times in a day, mm -hmm. and seven times in a day turn again to him or thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Amen. Seven times. Mm. If you get on my nerves seven times in a day, Amen. once or twice, I understand. Mm. You might not have coffee, <laughs> but now that third, fourth, fifth, I'm like, you're doing this on purpose now. <laughs> But Jesus said seven times, you're going to have to go, it's all good. It's all good. Amen. Mm. We still got to say, tell your name, we got some growing to do. We got <laughs> and obviously the apostles, the, the disciples did too. Because as an apostle said unto the Lord, Lord, increase our faith. We're going to need you to help us with this one right here. And then watch what Jesus says. He says, if, a, if, if you had faith. As a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto the sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea. And watch what it says, and it should obey you. He says that if you have faith as a seed. Now, I, I like to say it like this because they, they, they do reference a seed. And so when we've preached this before, we've talked to about the size of seed. You can have a small amount of faith, and you'll be able to speak to a tree, and then the tree should be plucked up and but I like to say it like this if you use your faith as a seed and what do we do with seeds we, we, we plant them okay okay for those playing the home game you got to participate all right got to say something back all right so we plant seeds correct yeah. so if you use your faith as a seed basically I could talk to a tree and a tree will obey whatever I tell it to do if I say get up do the electric slide the tree should do that Right? If I tell a tree anything, that's what it's saying. The tree should obey me if I have my faith as a seed. And I know in past teachings that I've got, I've had, and I've stood up before you in other places, and I've said, well, here's the deal. If I have faith, what's faith? Well, based on what we see in Hebrews, and we'll skip by there in a minute, it says faith is basically the word of God. If I have trust, belief, and confidence in the word of God, then whatever I speak to, it should obey me. Amen? Amen. But now here's what we've looked at. If that's the case, and that's what I've taught before, and I've heard that taught before, and you've heard it taught before, we've got to so, say, okay, then I need word. In order for me to walk by faith, I'm going to need a lot of word. How many of y'all have heard that? And so we get a whole bunch of scriptures, and we meditate the scriptures, and we confess the scriptures, and so scripture has been the focus. 
But I've noticed folks who've gotten a lot of scriptures sometimes don't have a lot of manifestation. Mm -hmm. That's what I've noticed. Now, some of you, I'm not, I'm not against scripture. Tell your neighbor he's not against scripture. Not against scripture. I'm not against that. But you can get a whole bunch of scriptures, post them on your refrigerator, put them in your car, and the scripture alone ain't just going to manifest. We got to do something to bring the manifest. So I don't want you to focus on just the scripture today. We're going to focus on scripture. We're going to talk about it, but that's not just the focus. I think if, if the scripture is the seed, the seed should produce what? Fruit. It should produce fruit. So today, our objective is fruit. I want to see the scriptures I have on my refrigerator turn into what they say. Y'all hear what I'm telling you? That's my objective. Okay. So A section. Are you with me? What's our objective today? B section. Are you with me? What is our objective today? C section. C section. Are you with me? Yes. What is the objective today? Fruits. D. Woo! What's the objective today? Fruits. Praise team. Don't be so mean with your gangster link. All right, okay. <laughs> they laugh because they know what I'm talking about. What is our objective today? Fruits. It is fruit. We are going to look to how do we get the fruit. What's causing my seed not to grow? Now, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 says that the word of God is incorruptible seed. It means it can't be destroyed. That means it should be producing something. But somehow, someway, something's wrong. We're missing something. Because some of the scriptures I've had on my bathroom wall, I'm still working on it. And then people have told me things religiously like, you know what? Maybe this or maybe that. Oh, you know what, Elder John, is that, or you got to clean. I remember one year, when we were younger, uh, my mom was praying hard. We had some financial hardships, and um, man, somebody came in. She, had, she did everything she could naturally, and then we had some people come from church we were going to the time, and they said, well, you got too much demonic stuff in the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she got rid of all the, all the carnal thing, got rid of, we used to keep ebony's. How many of y'all used to do that, the old big ebony's? Not the little ones, I'm talking the big giant ones that, yeah. <laughs> Jet magazines, get rid of that stuff. Uh, get rid of anything that said black in the title. So there was a, yeah, I'm telling you, records. My mom had these 45 records. And it was uh, a group called Black Something. Why don't you step into my world? She got rid of that. I went and got the trash because I was not like that. I said, man, I ain't getting rid of all this stuff, man. So maybe I was the problem. I was not having manifestation. I kept some devil stuff in the house. You know, uh, we went to one church and they told her, she, when we, we were coming up, and they told her, she said, well, I heard I got a tithe. And, and the guy looked at her and said, girl, you can't afford the tithe. Mm -hmm. So, so you get all these different instructions. And I'm, 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 I'm a practical guy. That's why I said I'm not about a whole bunch of religion. I want a relationship with God. Amen. So my prayer time is not all deep. Yeah. I'm talking to him. No different than I would talk to Elder Sarita and hang out with Elder Sarita. And sometimes he'll give me instruction. I was praying this morning, and he reminded me of something I need to do this week. And he said, now put that down. No, that's, that's how God is. Yes. And so I want a relationship. So I want to get all religion. I'm not going to be religious with you today. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes we'll go through the, all these processes, and we'll process God right out. Yeah. Hebrews 11, <laughs> before I get in trouble. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11. I'm serious, man. I'm, I, I done had enough of religion. I done had enough of all this fake stuff, you know, and things that we're doing in church that is God really, but we're going to get to heaven and see that life was so simple. You said, well, I did praise you. You said, yeah, but you ran around because you wanted people to see you. Or you did this. And yeah, man, yeah, what, why are we doing what we do? Mm. Hebrews 11. Mm. <laughs> now, the Bible tells us four times, if you go through Habakkuk chapter 2, you come over to Romans chapter 1, Galatians 3, and back to Hebrews, it says that the just shall live by faith. That's how we're supposed to live. If you're born again, we have to live by faith. You know, if you're living any other way, and that's, you have to learn how to do that. You know, you have to learn, you ever work with somebody new? 
or, or have some new relationship. And so when you're working with God, you have to learn how to trust him. And basically that's what faith is. I'm trusting God to do what he, he said he's going to do. And i am got a relationship with the Holy Ghost. I'm talking to him. And I'm trusting to make these moves that he tells me. That's how we do this thing, you know. And so when we're living by faith, and that's what the just is supposed to do, that means whatever God tells me to do, even though I might not be able to see it, I might not totally understand it, Lord, I got you. Okay, I got you, you know. And that takes some time. That doesn't just happen overnight because there's some things that a God will tap and your flesh don't want to do it. He'll tell you something to do. He'll tell you, go do something to somebody that you don't like. You'll get that prompting that goes, you know, go, go tell them, to, but they owe me money. They did this and they said this about my mama and, and their kid did this. He says, you need to go tell them you love them. Amen. Amen. But I don't, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but that's faith. And everything he does, he's going to do based on the foundation of love. All right? Our classic faith uh, definition is now faith is, verse 1, mm -hmm. the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. And then verse 3 says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And it says, so that's where we get our definition, that faith is basically the word of God. So you can say it with me. To walk by faith, to walk by faith. is to walk by the word of God. Notice it didn't just say this where it says worlds were framed. Y'all ever see our solar system? Yes. yes. If, you, if you have never done it before, never studied, just go Google it one time. And look at our solar, look at Earth and our solar system. And then look at our solar system amongst many other solar systems. Puny, and then think about you, where you live, and you think about the vastness of the solar system that God created This says worlds, the worlds. Now, I don't know what's on any other planet. I'm not saying there's life on any other planet. You know, it could be life. We'll find out later. I, I, I'm not here to discuss that. But here's how I know this world was created when I go to Genesis. I see Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 says, and God said. Amen. Amen. And then we see something. Verse 6 it says, and God said. Verse 9 it says, and God said. Verse 11, and God said. Verse 14, and God said. Verse 19, and God said. Verse 21, and God said. Then I get to verse 29. It says, and God saw. And we go back and we reflect. Well, what did you see, Lord? You saw everything that you spoke now we get a chance to see what you spoke. And so basically, yes, I got it. That's what I walked away with. Yes, to walk by faith. When God says something, I take what God says. If he's put it in the word, I put it in my mouth. I should see what I say. Amen. And you should. And it has worked for me. It has worked for you. Amen. But I go down here and I look at all these great men of faith. Look at verse 6. It says, without faith, it is totally impossible to please him. Then verse 7, Noah. How many of y'all know he's a great man? And I'm about to read you what's called the Hall of Fame of Faith. Noah. That's what it is. All these great men by faith. Verse 8, by faith, Abraham. How many of y'all know Abraham did some great stuff? Powerful things, man. We wouldn't be worried without him. Then he needed his wife. Verse 11, Sarah. Because no man can do it by himself. Amen. 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 Listen to women say amen. amen. Verse 20, and Isaac. Yes. By faith. Verse 21, and Jacob. By faith. Look at 22. Joseph. By faith. Moses, our man, Moses. Ten Commandments, Moses. By faith. But then look over here in verse 31. By faith, the harlot. Now it didn't say just Rahab. They had to point out something. The harlot. For those playing the home game. Harlot in our vernacular means the prostitute, the hooker, depending on when you grew up, Houdini from the book of Houdini, Jalil and Ecstasy, the freaks come out at night. That, that harlot, <laughs> the harlot Rahab, that helps me to think, okay, if she was a harlot, gave her a title. Now I'm sure she probably cleaned up her ways, maybe she didn't, I don't know. But what it said is she did something by faith. And she's in here with all these other brothers. It says, by faith, the harlot, Rahab, perished not with them that believe not. 
when she had received the spies with, with, with peace. Let's go, Jer let's go to Joshua chapter two. Let's go peek at her, her life. Let's go to, y'all don't mind turning, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we come to church for, right? That's right. <laughs> Joshua chapter two. Now in Joshua chapter 2, Joshua, son of a he sent out some spies to go spy out the land. Mm -hmm. And they get to the land, and uh, they end up, they land in, in Rahab's house. Um, and Rahab, basically, uh, she was hiding these spies. But when the guys came to, to hunt them down, uh, they, they knocked on her door and said, hey, we heard some men came. You got the men here? She said, nah, you just missed them. <laughs> they rolled out, but here's where they went. You, you hurry up. You'll catch them. They went out the gate, went down here. You'll catch up with them. And she covered. She covered for him. Okay? Now let's pick this up in verse 9. It says, And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, and that your terror has fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Think about that. Everybody is scared because they heard about these guys. Who's hearing about you? We'll get to that in a minute. Verse 10, for we have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you. When you came out of Egypt and what, um, what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon, and Og, among ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, oh yeah, he is God in heaven above and in the earth below. I, now, I don't want anybody, let's just pause right here, put a pin in it. I don't want anybody to be afraid of me. Unless you're messing with my daughter or my wife, then I need you to, you know, understand that I'm not that guy. But I don't want anybody to fear me. But the testimony here is powerful. That we don't have Facebook Live. We don't have email. We don't have phones. Yet word was spread abroad, was spread abroad about God showing up on the life of a people that caused their, I guarantee you, the economic system changed because of these guys were coming. They built this wall, put in security, looking for these guys to come. Their hearts, the Bible said, melted because men of faith was on the way. Who's talking about you? See, I would love it, you know. You're John Stevenson? Oh my God, we heard about you. Yes, I'm lifting my hands. You lay your hands on me. I want that. Yeah, I want them to see, not because of me, I want them to see the God in me. Amen. That's what should be, testi your testimony should be the same thing before you walk in the room. We done heard about you. Mm -hmm. So they heard about them and they're in terror. Now watch this. Now, we, now what we see in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 31, that Rahab by faith did something, right? Watch this. Verse 12 said, here's what she did. Now therefore I pray you, since I done took care of you, hid you, lied, got these guys off your back. I pray you swear unto me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, mm -hmm. that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. And here's what I want. And that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. She went to negotiating. Did you see what she did? She said, okay, I hooked you up. Here's what I need. Okay, now I can call him back. But, uh, you know, I need you to, when y'all come to kill everybody, keep, keep me and my father, and then my stuff. You know, I need my, all my stuff intact. Uh, my, father, my, my uncle, you can take my uncle, he's a trip. But just keep all of us alive. You understand? I don't, you know, now she's a harlot. Yet the Bible said by faith, she did something. Now, where in this particular scripture did you say, see God say something to her? Nowhere. You didn't see one word from God. You didn't even see Joshua say anything. Let's read the rest of this verse. Verse 14 says, And the men answered her, Our lives for yours, if ye utter not this our business, and it shall be when the Lord hath given us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with you. And the Bible says this right here was faith. She made her own deal. I just want to talk to you today. Now what's the objective? It's fruit. You can make your own deal. Some of us are waiting for Lord, Lord give me a word. Speak to me. 
What you gonna do? I don't, I'm waiting for the Lord. I'll submit to you today, he's waiting on you to say so. Amen. He's waiting on you. Now, do you need scripture? Sure, get your scriptures, yes. But I've done things in my life, I didn't have one word until later on I could find a scripture to line up with it. But God said, go do this. Show me where it says, go get a church, gut it out, build it on 7-7 Metropolitan Court. You can't find the scripture. You can find a scripture that lines up with it, but sometimes what I want to show you today, sometimes just start calling what you want and God will back what you want. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we're looking for, and I've had people put me in bondage to, okay, what's the scripture? I just know that he's not a respecter of person. Like, well, where's it at? I don't know. See, this is why he ain't going to manifest because you don't know where the scripture's at. Did he say it or did he not say it? He said it. So we get so religious with stuff when God's given us the authority, the power, take dominion, walk in your dominion, and call those things that be not as though they were, we try to look for all, you got, and listen, I'm not against, tell your neighbor again, he's not against scripture. I'm just for you walking in your authority. And sometimes we're waiting on the Lord, and I'll submit, he is just waiting on you. He's waiting on you. You've show, he's shown you a picture. Sometimes I've had a picture, a vision, a dream. And I'm like, okay, I need a scripture for it. I need a scripture for it, Lord. I, told him, I know it's you. And he said, boy, will you just go ahead and do this? <laughs> and sometimes we're waiting for things to happen because we've been taught all these religious processes. And God is just trying to relate to you. He's just trying to love on you and show us stuff. And that right there, what Rahab did, was by faith. Now, in case y'all don't trust me, let's go to Matthew 21. Because if Jesus said it, it'll be true, right? That's right. <laughs> I'll join you up there with that hot jacket on, just tell me, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm gonna try to, didn't I tell you I'm gonna rip up some stuff out your mind today mm -hmm. and try to get you to doing things? And I'll dare say some of you've done it before. You ever been to a point where you just got tired? And said things out of frustration. I did that one day. We didn't have, I didn't have a car. And uh, we had a car. My, my, my wife had the band, got married, and I had to do some stuff and had babies. So she drove the car. So I didn't have a car. And so I'm taking the bus. And I got to carry mail all day. So you stand up. And I'm, I just needed a car. So I'm confessing. Father, I thank you that you supply all my needs. And I'm confessing, 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 confessing. I thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I got a car. I'm doing all that confessing. Then one day, um, Karen said, well, don't, 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 don't take the bus. I'll get you to work. I said, well, I can't play around. I got to be on time. <laughs> you know, I know you'll get me there, but it depends on when that's going to happen, y'all. And so, so I got to take the kids that way, so I'll drop you off. And we were running late. And, man, I was frustrated. Because I'm like, man, see, see, I'm going to have to hear this, you know. And I'm already hearing stuff. I'm doing my job, and I don't like the job. You know, I just, you know I'm fussing. And so she's driving, and I'm just, we're going, I can still see where we're passing. It was Sir Walter Raleigh's in, it's not there no more. I, just like it was yesterday, I was so frustrated. I said, in the name of Jesus, I'm gonna have me a car by the end of the week, you hear me? She kept driving, and I was frustrated. Do you know by the end of the week, this uh, carrier came to me and said, hey John, you looking for a car? There's a guy selling a car for $400 on my route. Now I was confessing my scriptures, but sometimes I don't want to use sickness because Mr. John, he ain't here though, is he? Uh, you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Okay, then you just tired and getting tired. I can't, can't say sickness or death around them, all right? You, know. you ever been there? And I, I call it a holy frustration and a determination that this is the right. last day. That's right. I'm going to deal with this. Right. Ever had that? That something just happens? Yes, sir. That's what I'm trying to show you today. <laughs> How we can turn that on on purpose and stop stuff from hindering our faith from working. All right? Watch Jesus. Verse, 20, um, verse 17 in Matthew 21. You guys with me, right? Yes, sir. What's our objective? Fruit. That's our objective, okay? Watch this. Verse 17, he says, And he left them and went out of the city into Bethany, and he lodged there. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered. Matthew 21. You guys there? Okay. All right, Tony threw me off. All right, and night, verse 19. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. 
Now, if you go to Mark chapter 11's version, it says they went and came back the next day and then they saw the tree. Nevertheless, I don't know who saw what, Matthew or Mark, I don't know, but here's the thing. We do know that some, Jesus said something, the tree died. Amen? Amen. Okay. And so watch this. And then um, the disciples saw it and marveled. You ever see somebody do a magic trick and they go, I mean, how'd you do that? You gotta be, how'd you do that? That's what they're looking at. He said something to the tree and it died. They said, how soon is the fig, the fig tree withered away? Then Jesus answered and said unto them, verily or truly, I like, I'm gonna say it like I believe Jesus said it because he's cool as the other side of the pillow. I says, truly I say to you fellas, if you have faith that you don't doubt not, you shall not only do this, which is done to this fig tree, but I'll take it a step further. You'll even shall speak to this mountain over here and say, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and it shall be done. And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you'll receive them. Wait a minute, Jesus, now you done took it to a mountain? I just want to know what you did to the tree, dude. This is amazing. But Jesus said, listen, if you got faith and then here's the key and you don't doubt, here's where I've had problems. Because I can say I got faith, I can have the word of God, and I confess it, and you ask me, oh, John, you believe? I, I believe I got a call, huh? in the name of Jesus, I believe I'm healed, I believe I'm healed, I believe I'm healed. I remember sitting in the mail truck, make, truck making confessions one day. I said, I'm going to make them 10 times in a row. And I had like 15 or 20 of them. And it was summer. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that my family is back. Father, I thank you that I'm reading all the confessions, reading all the confessions, and, and the Lord arrested me one day. He said, do you believe what you're saying? A few things on that list I believe what I was saying. A few things I was kind of doubting. And here's what he says. If you can have faith and believe, and then here's the key. Don't doubt. That word defined in the Greek means to waver or to consider. He says, if you don't doubt, you'll be able to speak to this tree and tell it to do the electric slide. That's my version of the scripture. Amen. Amen. Because if you can get up and tell it to die or move or, or mountain get cast in the sea, it probably could do whatever you want if you got faith. That's right. Amen. If you don't doubt. How do we get doubt? I'll tell you past experiences. If you ever had something happen to you in the past, mm -hmm. something showed up in your life where you tried to do something and a failure. If you ever been evicted and now God's telling you to believe him for a house. He said, we've been evicted three times, Lord. And now you're telling me to get a house debt free? Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. Doubt. Have you ever seen somebody else die of a disease? Mm. They've had it and you've been diagnosed with the same thing. Mm. Now you got to stand against it. Mm. There's doubt. Here's my biggest one. We'll, and we'll go to Numbers chapter 13. Go to Numbers 13. Because I believe you can overcome some of the things I just mentioned. But we do things unaware. We allow things to show up in our life while we're not paying attention. And I, I quote this scripture like a lot, Matthew 13. It says that the farmer went out, he sowed wheat. And as he sown, sowed wheat, the enemy came behind him and started sowing the tares. So now we need a harvest or something and the wheat and the tares come up together. And sometimes when you're looking to get something to manifest in your life, you'll find out where you really are when the pressure's on. Yes. Do you really believe? You know, my kids have never been exposed to certain things. Uh, I grew up part of my life in New York City. So there's certain things they just don't, they've never been exposed to. So if we go to New York, they might count money all out, you know, and, just, you know, and scream out their address. You're like, hey, hey, man. <laughs> this ain't Germantown. <laughs> you know, you understand what I'm saying? Because the environment will dictate your conduct. You, you understand? And so sometimes we've had an environment that has said things to us or done things to us, and now you got to stand and do this thing by faith, and it's hard. My kids have never seen that, so it's easy for them to just ask for stuff. I grew up, I heard my mama saying all the time she never had money. So I stopped asking. My kids never heard her say that. So they ask for stuff that's off the chain. Just assume they get in the car at 16. Say that again. See that again. I didn't even think about getting a car at 16 because I knew, yeah. one, she didn't have a car. Yeah. So, <laughs> so now I'm going to come and ask, you know, Ma, I got my license. Well, you better, I know you better get out, you know. <laughs> got one of the mamas at the shoe thing, you know. She didn't have a car, so I, there wasn't no way I was asking for a car because your environment sometimes will dictate. So uh, what I'm going to talk to you about is who's in your environment right now. 
Numbers 13. You're trying to believe God and walk by faith. Now, classic account with the spies. Moses sends the spies out to spot the land. He didn't just take anybody. He took rulers, people who were in charge, people who had influence. I want you to go spy out this land. And we see several times in Exodus, as you're reading, God shows up and tells Moses, tell these people, I'm going to take them to a land that's flowing with milk and honey, the land of all the ites. You're just going to overtake it. They kept hearing Moses preaching. Didn't hear God say it. They had to trust the man of God. That he, because God wanted to hang out with them. He was coming down, Kathy, to hang out with them. And when they saw that lightning and stuff, Dick and Darlene and all that, they said, like, okay, you know what? You talk to him, Moses. You deal with the lightning and stuff. We'll just believe you. But many times Moses says someday, they gave him a hard way to go. Verse 25, Numbers 13. It says, and they returned from searching the land after 40 days, about a month and a half. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. They brought back some milk and honey. So we've heard all this stuff and that you guys, our leaders, we trusted you came back, you brought it back to us and told them, he said, and it came to the land whither you sent us and surely it does flow with milk and honey and here's the fruit of it. Nevertheless, it was the people that are strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled and very great and moreover we saw the children of Anak there that's where Goliath came from so they, they said the Amalekites dwell in the land by the south and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites and the mountains and the Canaanites dwell by the sea there's all these different races of people man there's folks everywhere and by the coast of Jordan. And then watch Caleb. Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it. So how is it that we can have a bunch of us going and looking at the same thing, but come away with two different viewpoints? Here's how that happens. It's not what they see with their eyes, it's what they see from on the inside. So the ten spies, they saw something different from the inside, so they already went into this with doubt. And now Joshua and Caleb see something else. So they're like, wait a minute, y'all be quiet, hush. We can do this, let's go right now. I'm ready to do it right now, even without a plan. Let's go take this. He said, let us go right now at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they're stronger than us. And they brought up an evil report of the land. Which they had searched into the children of Israel, saying the land, though, uh, through which we have gone to search it, it's a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw. It's, people are everywhere in it. And the men are of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come to the giants, and we were in our own sight. That's the key. As grasshoppers. So we were in their sight. Let's go down to 14. And watch this, based off of that report of what they heard, all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. Their words and their testimony had the people hopeless, had them crying. Okay, who do you have that's got you hopeless? I need you to examine that. Who do you tell your dreams to? Who you believe in God for? That they might not intentionally with their intentions of their heart, but they're throwing things at you. Or this is, this is my big one. They're dogging the place where you eat. Mm-hmm. Mm mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who's dogging? Like here, let's use, let's use here. If, if Pastor Brewington or myself or any of the other leaders here get up and they preach something to you, who do you allow to preach against this leadership? or any preacher for that matter, that you eat from. Listen folks, we just the chef. We get the recipe. You bring your plate. You hear me? You bring your heart. You bring your plate. Who you allow to put dirt on your plate. So now when you're here getting it, you think, uh, I don't know about that. Oh, my stomach hurts. Maybe they're not cooking it right. You know, uh, did he wash his hands? No, no. You need to clean your plate. You eating off a dirty plate? What's, what's your heart like? 
I question that. Somebody cleaning your plate with bleach and say, it's clean. No, I'm just getting, being real with you. And now you eating off plate with ammonia and bleach and you wondering, but they look clean. No, they're not clean. They, they're hurting you. When they talk about big time preachers like Jake's and, and Dr. Dollar, they got this stuff. They're doing this. I heard Pastor Dollar say one time, he says, you know what, Lord, I'm not doing this no more. All I can do, me and Taffy can just do this and just live this ourselves. We keep getting this resistance and fight from the body of Christ. Oh, yeah. So you're talking about things that you see in the flesh that you don't agree with, with the man or woman or God that is preaching something. And then you're going to sit and listen and go, eh, it's not the same. It's bothering you. What's bothering is your heart. It ain't the word. Same recipe. Same chef. Getting better and more skillful at bringing it to you. But who are you allowing to dog? Your man or woman or God, your church or whatever, your whatever you listen to, whatever. Because you bring your heart. So now we're wondering why faith doesn't work. Could it be you got something going in your heart that's not good? And sometimes it's people. Sometimes it's the folks that you got just doubting and saying things, gossip, bad things are happening. And so now you're sitting here and you're going, it's just not the same anymore. Mm -mm. Because if your heart is right before God and it's fertile, it will grow anything. And you know it because it grows bad stuff sometimes. You are just pliable ground. If something put, is put in it, it will manifest. That's why it's important not to let the kids get involved in everything. So what's your environment like? I like to see happy things. That's just me. I, just don't, I don't go to movies that have rape and yeah. that kind of stuff. I can't stand that stuff. Or kids getting abused, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. It just does something to me, you know? It just, you know? And not just, I, just, I just don't want it in my heart, man. And so now I need to, how do I fix my heart if I got bad stuff in it? Because some people in good intentions will tell you certain things. You better be careful. You better watch it. Look out for this. Or so-and-so is this. And you'll just listen to that stuff. And you think it don't affect you? Yes, it does. And now you're trying to walk by faith in certain areas. And you're trying to hear the word. And it's a, it's a struggle for you. There's certain things that when I first got uh, rededicated my life back to Christ, I just believed it because I, I was so excited. You remember them days when you was excited? And you just like every, you know, amen. You was Carmen. Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking at the camera. The camera. You, you was calm, and calm and excited about Jesus. Remember them days when we was her, Elder Tammy. You can hear Elder Tammy. Go, oh, hallelujah! All right, she's here. You know, we got to get that back, man, and be excited about God the same way, man. It gets routine sometimes, and it's and it's affecting you. And the joy of the Lord is supposed to be my strength. I have no joy. It's not because we all ain't getting joy. How come she got the joy and we all in the same place? It's a heart condition. Boy. I know. Nobody's shouting and saying, hallelujah. Ain't nobody dancing right now. Come and, come and help me dance. Somebody said something, you know. I'm trying to give you the truth, folks, of why stuff don't happen and why there's doubt. Now let's go look at why there's doubt. Mark chapter 7, Matthew chapter 17. What's our objective? Fruit. It died out a little bit, y'all. <laughs> it's fruit, Elder John. <laughs> it's, it's fruit. It is, it's fruit. I'm trying to get you to the fruit. Now, to be totally transparent with you, I've taken what I'm teaching you and I've seen glorious things happen in certain areas. Then in other areas, I haven't seen it and I'm working on it. And it's not because God ain't doing it, the word ain't working, it's because God ain't showing me a vision. It's got to be something with me. Especially if I got a word from God. Every word from God is supposed to manifest. It's my response. If it's not happening, it's me. And that's what I'm trying to get you to see. What are we not doing? What are we allowed to affect our ground? I want to be in that Hall of Fame. Amen. You hear me? Amen. Right, right under Harlot Rahab and John Stevenson. You know, I want my name in there. Put your name in there. And by faith, he started a business and it was successful. And by faith, he had a, a, a radio show that, that spanned the country. And by faith, he had this. I want my name in there. And people were saved and their lives were changed. And, and by faith, he became a billionaire within two months. Yes, Lord. Amen. I want my name in there. Amen. 
Matthew 17. You should want your name in there. <laughs> and it can be. I think there's things we've already done by faith, but we kind of forget about it. David had to go remind himself, and it stirred him up. I killed a lion. I killed a bear. I killed, you know, and, you know, I did this, man. And I don't think that's a story. That's an account. He killed a bear for real. You didn't want to put your hands on David. A bear? Have you seen bears up close? <laughs> it's not a story. He killed a bear, folks. <laughs> a bear can run 40, 50 miles per hour. A bear stands up nine feet tall. Got every nail is like a, a razor sharp butcher knife. And he can swim. He can climb trees. Where you going? He killed that. <laughs> and uh, if I count from what I can tell historically he wasn't no big massive guy I doubt that Samson was just to mess with your tradition because if Samson was this big massive guy why do they have to ask him where's your strength wouldn't it be like God to take somebody that don't look like he you know on, on pictures I've seen like you know he was big swole but if I, if, I, if I had to ask you where your strength is, I could look at those people. I ain't got to ask him where his strength is. Because he looked like he got something on him. Isn't it like God to take somebody that don't have something, don't look at it, and make it great? He, that's the history of God. He can take your life and turn it around. He took a harlot and put her in the Hall of Fame of Faith. Matthew 17. Verse 14, it says, And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy. On my son, for he's a lunatic and sore vexed, and off time he, he's fallen into the fire and into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they couldn't cure him. Now, in Matthew chapter 10, Jesus gave them power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all that stuff, and the enemy, and rebuke devils. And they came back to him in Matthew 10 and said, Guess what? Them devils are subject to us just like they were to you. They was excited. But here, something didn't work. Verse 16 says, and I brought him to your disciples and they couldn't cure him. And Jesus answered and said, oh, you faithless and perverse generation, how long will I, shall I be with you? How long will I suffer you? You bring him to me. Then Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. <clears throat> and the child was cured from that very hour. And then the disciples came to him apart and said, why could not we cast him out? Now, let's hold your finger right here. Hold your finger or get that string. Put it in there. Or, or I know if you got tabs, it's going to be a little difficult. You have to flip back to it. I want you to go to Mark 9. I'm going to read this same account. It's going to give us a little, a better picture of what's going on. And then we're going to go back to 17, okay? This is Mark chapter 9. For the sake of time, I'm going to start reading. Verse 17. And one of the multitudes answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son which has a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh them, he tears them, and he foams, and he gnashes with his teeth, he pines away, and I spake to your disciples, and they couldn't cast him out. And they could not. And he answered them and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wild foaming. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came upon him? He said, of a child. He's all the time and cast him into the fire and cast him into the water and destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. This guy is pleading. I can't take this with my baby anymore. If you can do anything. And Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. And then watch this. Immediately, watch this. Straightway, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, I believe, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. He says, I'm believing, but I got some doubt. I got some unbelief here. I do believe. I believe. And I see that sometimes when we have people come up here. Come on, you're going to receive your healing. Come on, we'll lay your hand. You feel you're healed? Yes, I'm healed. I'm healed. Yes, I'm healed. They're crying. And it's like they feel like their emotions are trying to work it up. And you can tell they still got some doubt. This is what's going on here. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, you dumb and deaf spirit. I charge you come out of him and enter into him no more. Then watch this. Then the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was one as dead in so much that he said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. Now think now. We're standing here 
and we're trying to get this thing off this boy. Now the disciples had done this stuff before, but now we got a little different something going on here. Because now it looks like he's in the presence of Jesus and things get worse. Ever been there? Ever been there where you prayed and you say you're walking by faith and all of a sudden something else mess up? Not only did a bill come and this happened at the house, now the transmission jacked up in the car. Ever prayed about healing? Release your faith? And then now I'm here, I'm here, you feel good while we're praying? And then all of a sudden they come in and say, you also got this. Look like things got worse. And here's what it is, it's designed to get you to doubt. First thing you gotta do is remove the doubt, I gave you that in numbers. You gotta get rid of the wrong people. Amen. Get rid of the wrong things that you're hearing. Amen. Second thing, now we got to work on ourselves. Because if I don't work on me, something's gonna come down the pipe. And I'm going to have to deal with it. Let's go back to verse 17. Chapter 17 in Matthew. Matthew 17. <clears throat> Jesus is about to answer it. And Jesus said in verse 20. And Jesus said unto them. Because the, they're asking how come we couldn't do it. He says because your unbelief. Who's unbelief? Who's unbelief? The disciples unbelief. He said because of your unbelief is why it couldn't happen. For verily I say unto you, if you had faith, watch this, as a grain of mustard seed. Here he goes talking about moving mountains again. <laughs> you shall say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And watch what he says, he adds this, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. When I've read that in the past, I've always thought that was a kind of devil. But if we've got authority, he gave them authority over devils, he wouldn't give them just a little bit of authority and go, okay, but this kind of devil, I'm sorry, I didn't give y'all all the authority. Mm -mm. The reference there is this kind is kind of unbelief. Not kind of devil. This kind of unbelief. You're at a place now where you couldn't do this because now you saw something before you. Remember, started wallowing in foam. He said, this kind of unbelief and this doubt, you're going to have to deal with this through prayer and fasting. Now, do prayer and fasting move devils? No, your authority and your belief and confidence in your faith moves devils, not prayer and fasting. What is prayer? Let's just break it down to its simplest de definition. It's just talking to God. Your prayer, you hanging out with God, fasting, getting away, stuff that's a distraction in your life will help you when you come up in situations where you're doubting. I have more confidence in God the more time I spend with God. When I'm reading my word, worshiping, Praising God, getting the word in me, getting my heart filled with the word. I got more, I'm coming out like a superhero. Amen. Amen. How do you feel when you leave church? When we have high worship and we're worshiping, we're, we're shouting and we're screaming. Just, we had Mr. Allen gave a great word. You're like, yes, yes, my wall, I'm walking on my walls. Let it go a few days and you'll meditate on that. What happens? You falter back. So in order for you to get rid of that doubt and unbelief so you can speak to trees and speak to mountains and have them go now, you're going to have to spend more time in the area of God. Lord, you're with me. I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm mindful that you're here. I'm not surfing Facebook all the time while I'm supposed to be praying. I'm not on Twitter and seeing the news. I'm not watching the news. Nope. I got something that's coming down the pipe that I'm going to need some faith. I need to get rid of a devil and I need to know that I can do this. And sometimes it takes it and we wonder why we get breakthrough when there's emergency things that come up because you have gotten rid of everything that's a distraction because I got to live. I can't miss no more days at work in the name of, no, 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 no. That's going to fire me in the name of Jesus. No, Father, I think I'm here. We're, we're in it then. And we said the Lord showed up. He just showed up day one. If we put ourselves in a place where he's priority. And that's what he told us in Matthew chapter 6. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then all the things will get added. And then Romans tells us the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, comfort, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So when you're spending time with the Holy Ghost and you're talking to him and you're listening to him and allowing him to lead your life and praying and building yourself up with your faith. I'm going to tell you, I saw this little, this foaming thing. Not this foaming thing because Doris didn't foam. Sometimes she does, but not this time. Anyway, <laughs> that's my sister. And she's probably watching. Yes, I'm talking about you. Um, I was coming from a homegoing service, me and Elder Speed from D.C. <clears throat> Phone rings. 
And it's my wife. She says, where are you? I said, we're just leaving D.C. Um, it's homegoing service. She said, you need to rush over to Holy Cross Hospital. Your sister had a stroke. Okay. Okay. We were right, right down the street. We get over to Holy Cross Hospital. L.S.P. said, I'll park the car. I rush in, find out where she is. When I walked and moved that curtain and looked at my sister's <coughs> face, you should have saw her face. And now is a time, because my emotions tapped a little bit. Okay, now you gotta be strong. You're like, okay, mm mm, mm mm, mm mm, mm And how did, what, what are we gonna do? What do we know? I don't know nothing else but what God said. And so I walk over to her, I said, We're not having this, you know that, right? And she's slurring her words, she can barely talk. I said, mm mm. And so I quoted, quoted some things that we knew, some testimonies. And I said, we've seen God do too much, and we know what the Bible says. So I, here's what's getting ready to happen. You're going to agree with me. I'm going to lay my hands on you. And we get this thing off you right now. Amen. So what I said, that's all I said. I put my hands on my sister, and she lifted her hands and started praying. and said, repeat after me. Release her face right before our eyes. Her face started changing right before my eyes. At the moment, I couldn't go Matthew chapter, um, First Peter. Get, no, I couldn't do any of that. Because in the mixture of my emotions, if God said He said it, whether I could find the scripture or not, in the name of Jesus. So now we're gonna start this in our face because we got to do something. I said, move your hand, move your hand a little bit. She can barely move her hand. Wiggle your toes. Wiggle your toes. Come on. I said, toes, you wiggle. You move. I spoke to the body. Because if a tree can move, a live body sure enough can move if I give it instructions. She started moving her hand a little bit more. She started moving her feet a little bit more. She started moving, and then her face started cutting. Then she started joning on me. Because we started doing, you know, this silly Darius, you know, because we, we're joking. But here, don't, don't, don't shoot it down. Because most people who are dealing with stuff that doctors can't find, because the Bible says bitterness is rotten to the bone. And you can't diagnose that. But it does talk about a merry heart, what it'll do to your flesh. So we're laughing and joking. So if I come see you in the hospital, I, I was on joking because I'm trying to get you to laugh. Because I know it does good like a medicine according to the scripture. Can I tell you at the moment where it is? No, but I know God said it. I told you I'm going to rip up your little religion later down. Huh? Did he say it or didn't he say it? So now we're going to act on what he said. Now you need to know where it is. Yes. I'm trying to make a point here, okay? So she started moving. And then she's looking fine. And she's talking to me and slurring the words. But after a while, her words stopped slurring. And it got better right before I, then my wife came in. And my, my nephew, and I caught him at the door. I said, listen to me. Don't be getting here crying, y'all looking all sad. Right. Wipe your face, okay, because we got something going, okay? And then Karen's like, I'm not crying. What you want, man? Come on. I said, Jamal, don't, don't be crying, okay? You can be strong, man. Be strong, okay? I'm strong. We're going to be strong here, okay? So as soon as he get there, here, him ball. <laughs> brother <laughs> amen <laughs> but this is why you gotta have people like faith so you gotta be talking to everybody all the time about your testimonies and tell them what happened to you you know sometimes people believe you more than they believe the bible so so uh as she got straight we're laughing and joking um she had she started twitching cancer what's wrong with you she had a seizure right i've never seen anybody have a seizure right in front of us we done prayed Released our face, saw everything straightened up, and just convulsions and everything else. I'm getting to, trying to get the nurse and them to come in there. Like, well, we got, I see, I'm not her nurse. I said, we need a nurse. I, but I'm not. Girl, you don't get it. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> I about to snatch her from over that day. We can, she's standing right there watching this. You ain't from Delaney. My Anita, in the name of Jesus. And they came in and worked on her because faith was still working. But the seizure came up almost to make me think that what we was doing, I didn't seen too much, knowing too much, even right here, for me to give up. Don't you know she came out of that with nothing? 
I mean, she stayed a week in the hospital and they did some tests and all that stuff. But for somebody to have the stroke and the look on her face that she had at the moment, only God could have done that. Yeah. So now, here's what I'm telling you. That testimony is strengthening me. Because you can't tell me what I didn't see. A man with experience is never subject to a man with an argument. So you can never tell me what my God won't do. You can never tell me faith don't work. You can never tell me that he's not a healer. He won't restore right at the moment. And oh, after a little while, John, no, 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 no. I done saw it. Saw it with my mama. She had a heart attack. And we were concerned she had a heart attack that night. And y'all heard me, some of y'all heard me tell this story, but what I tell you later, because I'm out of time. But man, we rushed to the hospital that night and uh, we was in the hospital and the next day folks from the church came and she was feeling down and then she got pepped up because everybody came with laughing and joking. Then the doctor comes in. And he says, hello, Miss Stevenson. Your heart is permanently damaged, several places, da-da-da. It'll never be the same, so you gotta be careful, da-da-da-da. Her face changed right before my face. I took, oh, oh God. This brother. <laughs> so he had to leave. Once he left, I said, now you ready for Elder John to preach to you? Mm -hmm. I said, we know you had this happen before and this happened there, and God showed up. Man, we were poor in New York and God got us out and started giving her the stories. Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah, you're right. Her whole face changed. Then she wanted to get out of, out of the hospital. It's Thursday. She's like, why they got me in here? I know I'm fine. God didn't heal me. I said, Ma, stop fussing, you know, because you're going to get out of here. But you're not going to Ma, just relax. She fussing, right? Ma, they're going to let us out, okay? Let's just let God do his work in time. We already decreed it. You're going to go home in a little bit. Don't be tripping, okay? And so we're watching Changing Your World. And they are showing an episode of Pastor Dollar's previous year in the Jacob Javison in New York City where he had a convention that my mother was at. Right on the TV screen, close up on her face where her hands lifted in the healing no. No. showed her and my aunt and my sister God. four times mm. on that broadcast I looked at her I said Negro if this don't tell you <laughs> that you healed I don't know what else what a, it's almost like God knows where we gonna be so did he know the prophecy is she gonna be there yes and he happened to have that broadcast come around. She got all pumped up. And within a half an hour, the doctor came and said, oh, I'm sorry. You can go home. <laughs> because faith works, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you let nobody get in your ear, feed you doubt. Don't you think coming to church is just a casual thing? Get to church. Hear the word. Listen to the word daily. Get yourself stirred up. Let me read you one more scripture. I'm done. <clears throat> this is Acts. <clears throat> Acts chapter 17. And this is verse 10 through 12. It says, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogues of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily. They were better than the guys in Thessalonica because they were, had the readiness to receive God and they searched the scriptures daily. And here's what 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, that we having the same spirit of faith according to what's written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. If you can hear it, Believe it, speak it, Amen. you'll receive it. Amen. If you hear it, believe it, speak it, you will see it. God will manifest. So now, I want you to work on your ground. Work on those areas that you need to work on. Ask the Lord to reveal to you, where is it that I've got some doubt in my faith? He'll show it to you, and it's not going to feel comfortable. Because we all think we all that. We do, and he's going to show you stuff, and pro probably if you're married by your spouse, because he's going to get a double bang. Let's see if you can submit here. Yeah, that, that'll, that'll be a good one. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know. You, yeah, you're going to hear God. You know how many times I ask God something and Karen say it, and she don't say it like God would say it? <laughs> you need to stop doing this. Wait a minute. It ain't going to always come out good, but if you ask for an answer, he's going to give it to you. <laughs> and sometimes... It'll come to the person who's closest to you. And that might be, a, could be your child. 
Mommy, I thought the joy of the Lord was our strength. Why are you in here crying? Go to your room. <laughs> is the truth all right? Yes. How about is the truth all right no matter who it comes from? Because yes. <laughs> the truth is truth whether you like it or not. And sometimes we don't like how we hear it, but ask God, where am I weak? I'm looking at Minister Reggie. We watched Minister Reggie and Minister Pat walk through what they walked through. Do you hear me that night we walked in that me and Pastor walked in the hospital room? That brother was solid. He had a little bit of trepidation in his voice a little bit, but he didn't move. He wasn't. I'm like, man. And look at Minister Pat. Some of y'all don't know the significance of this testimony. We got to find some way to get it out there. But how many of y'all remember what, what happened, isn't it? And she's alive today, giving glory to God here at church because of what was on the inside of her. Come on, Stanley. Thank you, Lord. What was our objective? We got to try to stop things from killing off our seed. Said all that <laughs> to let you know stop having things and people kill off your seed. If you got dreams, those dreams are coming to pass. The only reason, the only reason they'll come to pass is because of us. If you're involved in anything, projects at work, I don't care what it is. If, if, if you're in charge of it, you are the man or woman to get it done. Here at church, I don't care what it is. It, it could be anything. If God has given you something and you see it, walk by faith, trust him, and just do what he tells you to do.